All right, so I just showed you how to stack some tables together using the query editing append tools. We took these three individual AdventureWorks sales files from 2015, 16, and 17, and we appended them as a new table called AW Sales 2015 through 2017, which included all of the data across all three files. And that worked pretty well, but remember the downside. This new table that we created is now dependent on the three individual component tables. So we can't delete any of these individual tables. We have to keep this whole set of four. So let's actually scrap these four sales files and pull them into Power BI using the folder approach instead. So I can delete the appended file first, press OK. And once that one's gone, now I can delete any of these individual ones because no relationship between them exists and there are no more dependencies that we need to worry about. So 2017, delete, there we go. So all of our sales data is gone. We're left with just the product lookup, the customer lookup, and the calendar lookup. And what I'm actually gonna do here is pull up the folder on my desktop containing these individual CSV files and create a new folder there. So go ahead and pull up your folder as well. Okay, so here's where I've got all of my AdventureWorks CSV files, including the three individual sales files. What I'm gonna do is actually right click and create a new folder right here within this same AdventureWorks folder. And I'm gonna name it something like aw underscore sales. You can name it whatever you want. And then once I've created that empty folder, I'm gonna select each of my sales tables, 2015, 16, and 17. I'm gonna drag them all into that AW sales folder. Now when you click in, you can see that it contains all three of those files. And once I've done that, I can go ahead and close that file window, return back to my query editor, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab a connection to a new source. And this time I need to go down into the more options and right here on the right, you'll see the option to connect to a folder. So let's go ahead and connect. And the first thing that Power BI is gonna ask for is the folder path. So let's go ahead and browse and navigate to those course files, Power BI course files, AdventureWorks, AW sales. So that's the folder that I just created that contains those three individual sales files. And I can go ahead and press okay and OK once more. Now the preview window looks a little bit different. It has this column that says content binary. It's got file names and extensions. So rather than actually previewing the data, the actual rows and columns, it's previewing the files that exist within this folder path. Now we have two options here. We can either combine and edit on the spot, or we can edit and actually walk through each of the steps of the combination. So I'm actually gonna choose the edit option because I wanna show you exactly what this looks like bit by bit. So there we go, when I press edit, it lands me here in the query editor and I see that similar kind of view that I got in the preview, right? I'm not looking at actual data points, I'm looking at attributes about the files that exist in the folder that I've linked to. So the key here is to look at this first column. This is kind of similar to the column that was created when we merged tables, where we had to take one extra step to actually split out the columns from the table itself. Same idea here, we have to take one extra step to break out the actual content within these CSV files located in the folder. And to do that, we'll just press this combine files button right here in the content column header. And when we do that, it runs through the append process and opens up a new preview window with a combined files header. And this shows us an actual data preview from each of our files. We can select the first, the second, or the third here. And if our preview looks good, if we know we've got the same column structure, data types, which we know we do, then we can go ahead and press OK. And after it runs through some processing, you'll see that the data lands right here in the preview window and contains data from all three 
of our files. So same thing, we can filter on that order date, show more, we're starting in January 2015, and our dates extend all the way through 2016, through the end of June 2017. So we've got all of our data in here, got all of our familiar columns out to the order quantity column. We do have one additional column here, which is the source name, and that just tells us which file within the folder that data came from. So kind of a helpful attribute if you do want to keep it. In this case, we don't need it. So let's go ahead and remove that source name column. And there you have it. We have our appended table containing all of our sales data in one place. And as you can see, it automatically gave us a table name based on the way we named our folder, which in this case was aw underscore sales. We can either leave it just like that or add the years to that, 2015 through 2017. In this case, I think this is the final version of the sales table that I'm gonna use. So in this case, AW sales, it's nice, it's clean, it's concise, that'll work just fine. So last thing to note over here on the left side of the screen, you'll see that AW sales table showed up right beneath our calendar lookup. You'll also see some automatically generated query information above that. And this was all automatically written automatically generated in order to make all that magic happen by appending the files within the folder. So we don't even have to touch this. We don't even have to think about this. I usually will just kind of collapse it. And then in this other queries folder, this is where all of our kind of primary tables will continue to live. So again, same end result as loading up three individual tables and using the append tools from the home menu except now we have one nice clean table without those extra tables and dependencies. And even more importantly, if we ever need to pull in additional years of sales data, we could simply drop those CSV folders right into that AW sales folder and press refresh right here inside the query editor and all of that data would automatically be pulled in. So that should just about do it. Last step is to close and apply. And that'll go ahead and load that new AW sales data to our file. And let's take a look at relationships. There it is, AW sales. So with that, there's your pro tip, connecting Power BI to a folder of files.